What is up, everybody? So this video is going to be on the best way to start playbooking. So if you're brand new to trading and you just don't have any good setups, this is going to help you figure out how to get better setups. Um, if you're a little more experienced but you don't know what setups are quite the best, this will help you figure that out. And if you scalp, uh, playbooking scalp setups takes fucking forever if you kind of do it the traditional route. This will help you be able to playbook a shitload of really good scalp setups very quickly. So this is good for anybody who's doesn't have anything to guys that are trying to play book scalps basically scalping setups now for those of you who are longer term traders this will help you as well just realize you may want to approach it a little differently so uh before we jump in this video i'm going to tell you what's going on because i haven't like put, posted a video in 40 something fucking days for those of you who don't care and you just want my information, there will be a time link in the description below. Click on that and you're going to go straight to the lesson and you don't have to hear me rant and rave about what's going on, why I don't do videos, uh, because you don't care. For those of you who care, because I know some of you do and you're very nice, generous people, uh, what's been going on? There are a lot. Uh, first and foremost, I own a duplex. I'm got to lease it out to somebody new the tenants leaving uh and this property is a fucking nightmare uh the the foundation's falling in the ground so you know there's all these cracks forming in the walls and the doors aren't fucking latching and i gotta go over there and patch all that shit up and uh deal with real estate agents and i had to put in a new sidewalk and i have to trim a tree out front um and just i'm dealing with some lawyers on some certain shit here because this property sucks uh badly i'm thankful for it don't get me wrong but fuck this thing's a a nightmare um yeah so i'm dealing with that on top of that uh, i spent a month putting together a very detailed resume that's got like 108 minutes of footage on several playbook setups and I submitted it to prop firms. That's right, I'm trying to go pro. Well, I submitted it to one prop firm. And that's SMB Capital. And guess what? Uh, they sent me an email telling me they went with somebody else. But that here's the thing. I think I got a little further than a lot of other people because, hey, they got back to me. If you, you, if you don't really have what they're looking for, they, they won't get back to you at all. They don't send you shit. They even give you, uh, when you apply, they even tell you if you meet our standards or whatever, our qualifications, we will send you an email. So they said, Dear Fat Cat, thank you for your interest in a position with SMB Capital. We have reviewed your resume and have carefully considered your qualifications. While your skills are certainly impressive, thank you, uh, we have decided to pursue other candidates for the position. Fuck! Uh, we receive thousands of resumes every quarter. A spot on our desk is extremely competitive. I knew this going in. That's why I spent a month building a resume. But it's no big deal because it's going out to other firms. I just wanted them to have uh, first dibs. Anyways, if your first interest is trading, it certainly is, then please do not give up. I will never give up. We are a small desk who trades a niche style and has very specific needs. We do not mean this, nor should you take this as a rejection of your potential trading ability. We will maintain your records, and should a position open that matches your qualifications, we will contact you. We also encourage you to visit our website as new positions become available. Again, thanks for your interest. Here's the thing. <laughs> I applied for experience equities trader. Uh, they don't have, they didn't have an opening for futures traders. And I mentioned I'm a futures trader. So really I kind of applied for a position that I applied for a position 
with, uh, I guess, the criteria of being... It's like me fucking uh, applying to be a pilot, but I'm a taxi driver, and I'm telling them I drive taxis, and I don't fly airplanes. That's basically what I did. But uh, they, I think they are they don't have a futures desk currently. Uh, I know their head futures guy left. So, uh, But hey, I gave it a shot, right? What's the worst thing they can do? Not send me a email? So I'm happy for that. Shit. So... You know, there's multiple ways to get into these types of things I'm good at figuring out. You know, if the front door doesn't work, go through the back door. If you can't do that, there's a side door. And if that fails, I'm going to repel through the ceiling like a Navy SEAL. So there's that. Uh, next, uh, I've been working on a Udemy course. Um, so Udemy is a place for instructors, a website for instructors to teach whatever they want. And uh, the website provides students for you. And I'm building a basic course on order flow. You know, how to read adapt the market. Uh, market orders versus limit orders. Because um, all the shit on this YouTube, you basically can get the same thing on this channel. It's just more refined and it's put together. Uh, in a, it's just just more streamlined because there's a lot of shit on this specific channel that should be watched in a specific order, but it's so messy that it's like, where the fuck do you start? And a lot of people that come to channels don't think to do that because it's not my, my, my YouTube doesn't seem like it's a course, but it kind of is if you know where to start and what videos to go through next. But I, I never made it easy for you guys to really navigate. Sorry. Um, so I'm streamlining that on Udemy, and also a lot of the shit on here uh, is really old and kind of outdated, and I mean, I've logged thousands of hours since some of these videos have been posted, and I just have a lot more experience, and uh, in my opinions and outlook on things do change, so if you comment on a video, and just look at the date, because realize that I'm still growing, right? Just be wary that what I may have said in something and I say and I contradict myself in another video, that's probably because I learned something, right? So I'm sharing with you guys as I grow. Uh, that's what this channel is all about. So the Ud oh, in the Udemy course, I actually don't cuss at all. I keep it professional. So that's right. If you uh, don't like it when I cuss a lot, you can pay to not hear that. But honestly, uh, since you guys are subscribers here, you really don't need it at all. Because uh, it's basically the same shit. I'm just tapping into an audience that won't find my channel. And I'm going to get paid for it. So, um, yeah. I want to cash flow. I want to get paid. I want to have something out there where I can make money every month, even if it's not that much. So I'm just kind of building that little thing to just put out there and then it starts working. But all that video making shit, it takes up the YouTube time and quite frankly, YouTube's really not that important. You guys aren't that important at all to me. Sorry. I'm uh, Okay, that hurt. I'm No, I'm sorry, I hurt your feelings. I'm, I apologize, I love you guys. Look, I love you guys. Look, I'm giving you this video, okay? I love you guys, it just, Understand that Papa Fat Cat is so busy right now that I just don't have time. Okay? I just don't have time for this right now. Alright? Papa Fat Cat's trying to get paid. So, he's trying to get fucking tenants into the fucking duplex. Alright? So, trying to trying to get a job. Alright? Just, that's what I'm doing. Okay? Just understand. Alright? I love you guys. Alright? I'll be back. I'm always coming back. Just letting you know what's going on. So, you know... Here I am. Anyways. Yeah, so, and also, uh, I've really pulled my head out of my asshole as far as my own trading goes. Uh, I, you've traded afternoons for years, and then now I'm trading mornings. I'm trading all fucking day long, baby. I wake up in the morning and I jog. I fucking hate running. But uh, I do it every morning because otherwise I'm tired and I perform like shit in the morning. So I have to do it to perform well. And um, fuck, I'm time blocking on a calendar. Um, I've put together checklists, processes. I have laminated checklists where I go through all these uh, processes. 
I have all these procedures. I spend 12 hours a day on my trading. So, you know, I trade in the morning, I review in the afternoon, I play book in the afternoon, and then in the afternoon I either trade again or I do some sort of practice technique, which we'll get more into that as we go through the playbook lesson on here. Uh, and then I review again, and then I get ready for the next day. And, and on Sundays, I'm spending like uh, four hours getting ready for the week. I spend a lot of fucking time on my trading because I just I want to get better faster. I want to do better. Like I just want to I want my bigger trade ideas to work better quicker. And this is how it's done. So uh, that's what's going on, guys. So let's go ahead and jump into this lesson. Uh, what time? Is, how many minutes has this been streaming? I don't know because I want to know where the time slot is on it. Whatever. Let's go. Uh, so, so here's the deal. You're going to need some sort of uh, stat tracking software. All right. Uh, you can playbook using Google Documents. I have like an older playbook video on that. And quite frankly, it's not that great. It kind of sucks. But if you're trying to go that method, you could possibly do that. But I find that using Google Documents and spreadsheets and all that, first and foremost, it's not as efficient as some sort of professional software. And it takes way too fucking long. You're just spending way too much time on it, especially if you scalp. So this is journal ticks or journal analytics or whatever. This is a journaling software that has stat tracking that comes with Jigsaw. Now, you're not going to have the full version when you get Jigsaw. Uh, if you pay 50 bucks a month, uh, that allows you to live trade on the Jigsaw platform, which everybody apparently thinks that's not worth it. Um but it also gives you full access to journal ticks. So you get the benefits of both of them shits. And that's fucking amazing. So you need something. There's another option called Trader View. Uh, View spelt V-U-E. I've used that. I don't like it nearly as much as journal ticks. Because uh, you, when you upload a photo of like a chart you screenshot, you have to host it on a third-party website, and that shit sucks, and it just takes way too long to do it. <clears throat> and I, I just think Journal Ticks is better. So you're going to need something like this. It's 50 bucks a month. Don't be a fucking cheap ass, okay? Uh, the overhead and trading is nothing compared to other businesses with the potential returns you can make. So, <clears throat> 50 bucks is like uh, four ticks on a one lot, okay? So, uh, playbook it and then pay for it, all right? Just do it. Or get a second job or, or I don't know. Do something and get this because this is going to help you substantially. All right, and I've never done a video on journal ticks, so this is kind of like an intro video. But anyways, let's get into this play playbooking thing. Now... I'm going to show you the results for a month of playbooks um, so you can have an idea what you'll see after you go through the processes I'm about to explain. So this is a uh, winning PL by trade type. So uh, my best trade is the VPOC transition, the 80 percenter, the VPOC bounce, the VWAP bounce, big wing. I don't like that name. I'm going to trade it change it to the dragonfly but this specific trade i've actually just this specific trade is a new trade that i did today so it's the first of its kind um so while it did win well <laughs> this is where i'm a little hesitant it did win well and i want to keep track of more of these setups but this trade by distribution our distribution by trade type, I think is a little more important than winning p &L. I think they're both important, but I want to know what playbook trades am I taking more of because that's great. Because I might have a playbook trade that I think is a playbook trade, but I only take it once a month. And that do really does me no good in the end. You know what I mean? Because um, I want to see these... For the specific type of playbook trades I'm looking for, I want to see them at least every day or at least every few days. At, for, well, at least for me, because I'm a scalper, 
I want to see them every fucking day. So that's very important. So distribution by trade type is very important. This is how many times I'm taking these things. And you can see the VPOC transition I take uh, the most of, and it's the best performer. So this is after a full month, by the way. Now, there's these other trades and other... This isn't just all my other trades. These are other playbook trades because I have a fuckload of them. But there's such a small winning percentage that they they just get clustered in here. Like this uh, pock to pock. This one performs better than any one little trade in here. There's like a shitload of them in there. But they those account for 10%. There could be like 10 other trade playbook trades in there, to be honest with you. So that could be 1% for each of them. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, uh, now as far as distribution, so that big wing trade isn't even in here because, honestly, I don't take enough of the big wing. So while it yielded really good money, I, I took one of those, and I know I did. So that's kind of like where it's a little dicey. Um in that specific trade, I wouldn't trade like live at all until I get more samples of that. But the VPOC transition, yes. Uh, the 80 percenter, yes, because the 80 percenter is one of. I take quite a few of those, and they profit very well. But I take more VPOC bounces, but the VPOC bounce doesn't profit as well. Um, so the 80 percenter and the VPOC bounce are like inverted as far as win loss and how many times I take them. But those three trades are my top performing trades. VWAP bounce, um, yes, it wins well, but it's not even on here at all. So while, while it's just like the big wing trade, it's not something I take as often. Like I'm taking more of these, like the wind up FOSO. That's a fake out, shake out the stair stair steps. But these are more scalping. These are scalping patterns. So a lot of these smaller trades that I take more frequently, these are scalping plays. Um, they're not necessarily these big long holds. And here's the thing. There's a huge misconception with my scalping. I don't just shoot from the fucking hit. I'm looking at patterns. I'm looking at tape, obviously. But I always have big picture ideas. And I'm always scalping those. Like my fighting for price video, that's the last one. That's an example of me fighting for a specific big trade. I have plenty of videos on how I mentioned that I always have a bigger picture idea, but I just scalp around them. The thing is, some of these bigger playbook trades, um, I'll scalp them like five, six times, whereas if I just held it once, I wouldn't have to scalp it five, six times. Uh, that happened like, yesterday there was a really good trade that was just running and i scalped it five six times and each one of those trades was a winner but that's like five to six times more commission and there's like uh, ticks in between those entries that i'm leaving on the table had i just hit it and held it it would have been even better so yes scalping is great and all but on there's certain big setups i'm not the best at big setups so me playbooking not only helps me with my scalp setups but it also helps with the big picture holds that are the, the big daddy grand slammers which i want to get better at because i see them and i know they're there and i know when they're coming i just need to get better at holding them and this is where this process helps so but i know that these are the big ones so the reason what what I want to do is take my top performing uh, playbook trades for the month. So I want to take I want to look at the distribution by trade type and the winning PL by trade type, and I want to figure out because this could be completely inverse for you, where they're all completely different. So you're gonna have to kind of like mm, sort of finesse it a bit because your VPOC like my VPOC transition it just happens to be the best in both categories so i know for sure that trade is great but for you you're you could be taking a lot more of these specific trades but they don't yield you nearly as much they could be in a smaller percentage uh overall in the month but that's okay 
because those specific trades, if you're taking a lot of them, you're going to slowly learn how to exploit them so you can hold them longer if they allow that. So give me a second here. I had to drink some water there. Now, there's this losing PL by trade type. You guys probably noticed this VPOC transition. It's the worst one, even though it's the best. There's a reason for that. These are all my playbook trades for the month. Had I just playbooked, my month I would have made uh, $14,362. Uh, I took 46 trades. Um. So I don't know how many, uh, you about two to four lots, depending. You can see here. <clears throat> so, you know, the commission on that wouldn't be too bad. But had I stuck with just playbook trades, that would have been a really decent month, honestly. I would like to make that in a day. But that's what this process is all about. But the thing about that big, how the VPOC transitions a big loser is because of this specific trade right here. This, when I hit it, it worked out perfectly. Like I, I, I entered it perfectly um, and it ran in my favor 18 ticks and I just let it come back on me and through me uh, by 11 ticks. And I just really fucked it up really badly um, on four lots too. Fuck. So that's why this this says it's the worst trade. Um, I it's not though. It just happens to be that one fucking example kind of fucked it. Most of my playbook trades for the month are all winners, but you also have to understand I have a lot more experience. Uh, so I've been watching this shit for years, so most of my playbook shit's always going to be winners, because I know how to hit them well. And if I know how to hit them well, I need to keep cataloging them. Um, so these are the best of the best trades, and, um, you can see that in the MAE and the MFE. Now remember, MAE is how many ticks the trade went against you while you were in it, and MFE is how many ticks the trade went in your favor while you were in it. It's a real risk to reward ratio. And that's very important for when trying to find trades. And let's go ahead and just jump into this. So I put together this uh, little list, steps to playbooking. Uh, step one, you guys need to record your fucking sessions, record your trading screen, especially if you're scalping. Uh, if you're not, if you're taking bigger holds, uh, you may be able to just get everything off of a chart. That's fine. But I definitely, I mean, you want to learn how to scalp your way into it. I don't, I mean, scalping is a very valuable skill, even if you don't want to just grind out ticks every day for a living. Um, so here's the thing. You want to have a strategy tester demo account. You want to have a demo account. And this is what I suggest. I suggest... Uh, you guys over trade uh, that demo account. Okay? So here's the thing. Have a strategy tester and over fucking trade. Okay? This is for those of you who are brand fucking new, who don't know what's going on. Trade 150 to 200 trades a day. Just go at it. And what you want to do is you want to look at the PL at the end of the day. First and foremost, you you want to kind of just like look at the uh, he, here's how you can shortcut some of your process. Reviewing your trading session via recordings is very important, but reviewing 150 to 200 trades is fucking impossible. That's going to take you fucking six, seven hours. So what you do is you go through your PNL and you look at the very best trades and the best trades aren't the ones that yielded the most money, in my opinion. The best trades have a low MAE count and a high MFE count. You want to look at those trades because you hit them very well. If you have a trade that has a win rate of 60 ticks but a loss rate of 30 ticks, well, if it originally went in your favor 60 ticks, that's good. But if it went against you 30 ticks, then turn around and went in your favor 60 ticks, then that's not a good trade, the playbook. But if it went the other way around, then it's good. 
So you may want to investigate that further. But for those of you who are new, who have no idea what to do or what, you know, what kind of shit to put in here, look for these. Look at my MAE and my MFE count. 2 and 12, 3 and 4, that's okay. The reason that's 3 and 4 is because that was a bigger trade and I recognize that. 2 and 9, 4 and 0. Well, that was obviously a bigger thing. Anyways, here we go. 3 and 12, that's good. 2 and 22, 1 and 10, 1 and 8, 4 and 24, 1 and 6, 0, 7, 3, 10, 1, 7, 2, 15, 1, 13, 1, 29, 1, 39, 1 and 13, 1 and 9, 5, 26. So you can see how low this number is and how large this number is. That is what you want to be looking for, shit like that. Uh, obviously, that's the one that fucked up. And then look at the last trade from today, man. What a knockout. 2 and 54 on the big wing. I don't like that name. I'm going to change it to the dragonfly. So when you're looking at stuff, the way I do it is, uh, so here's your, you know, you got your MAE and your MFE, right? So if I have a uh, four, so the minimum MFE I'm really looking for is at least eight. It depends. Times are volatile right now, so I'm looking at eight. Now, if the markets are dead and they don't, they're not as volatile, I would definitely be looking at uh, maybe a seven. But really, I don't know. Eight is kind of my cutoff. It depends. It depends what happened. Again, I'm more experienced, so my playbook's going to be different than the way you do it, but... I'm trying to cater to all you guys. So if I have a 4 and 8, I'm not looking at that shit, right? Because it, it's like a, it's not a good risk to reward ratio trade. If it's a 1 and an 8, I'll look at it. If it's a 2 and an 8, I might look at it. If it's a 3 and an 8, I probably won't look at it. If it's a 4 and an 8, definitely not. But if it's a 4 and 15, I will take a look at it. Uh, if it's a 4 and 25, I will definitely look at it, okay? Um... So somewhere in that zone, you want to look through that P&L, look at all those trades. And what you want to do is look at the recorded session and just keep replaying it over and over and s try to make sense of it. Try to make sense of it. Look at a chart. See if there's maybe some sort of pattern. Look at a, maybe a volume profile. See maybe if it's bouncing off of a high node, a low node. Do what you can to reverse engineer those specific trades you performed well on and try to figure out what the fuck, why did it work? What was so good about it? And if it was really good and you, you just don't know, come up with some fucking name. So what you're going to do is, you know, go into here. Oh, fuck, where is it? Go and click on this playbook category. And this is how you create new playbooks. Type uh, whatever, uh, uh, you know. Maybe you have a trade name called the Big Poo Poo. Okay, maybe you can do that. Uh, so the the market goes up and then drops in, like the market takes a huge shit. You know, something like that, you know, do whatever. And then, because I got a fuckload of them. Um, so just keep creating all these motherfucking things and then do it the next day. Do it the next day. Do it the next day. And keep naming the best ones that you performed on. And just over trade. Because the more trades you take, the more samples you get, the, the more you can kind of see. Uh, what's going on uh, here's the thing i miss playbook trades all the time and when i miss playbook trades it's a lot harder to put into the system because there's no your trade you didn't trade around it even if you trade a playbook setup and it sucked that's still good because you can learn from it and you can still tag it if you didn't trade it it's harder to do you're gonna have to put it in like uh, your day overview note and it'll get lost in the shuffle, and you'll never be able to pull the stats on it. You'll never get these specific stats if you're missing these trades. So trade it, and if you trade it like shit, that's okay. Keep learning from it, right? So if there's patterns you're seeing, but you suck at them, 
keep tagging them. And um, if you have a high amount of distribution by trade type, that's good. And then try to tweak it to where you can actually hit them well. And if you can't hit them well for shit, well, then then you need to get rid of it. So that's the thing. You want to keep over trading contrary to popular belief because you're taking more samples in the market. And when you do that, uh, you can build up a playbook quicker on multiple setups. And what you're going to do is you're just going to keep cramming shit in there, keep naming all the stuff you do well on. And um, you'll start to notice certain ones look like other ones. Um, you're going to, again, if you're new at this, you're going to spend a lot of time really sitting here figuring it out. So it's going to take you a lot longer, but that's okay. You're learning, right? So it's going to take you a lot longer than me to kind of do this. But there becomes a point where you can do it very quickly if you know what you're looking at and seeing in the trading session, uh, which I'll show you. But so you cram in as many of these fuckers in there. Uh, probably at the end of the week, you want to look at these stats and see what's what. Try to make sense of them. Every actually at the end of every week, uh, you want to go through two weeks of playbook setups so you have it fresh in your mind for the next day. So you have an account where you just fucking overtrade, right? Um, look through the PL and look for the best performing trades. So let's talk about screenshot charts and reverse engineer, make it make sense. Okay. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to start screenshotting these fucking things. So let's go through some of these motherfuckers. Go through for like four of them. We'll go through the big wing, which again is going to get re renamed. Since this is the only playbook of its kind i did it under my strategy tester account it's not good enough to be traded on a different account okay so i have a i have a big picture of the deal uh this is a composite profile and then this is like my recorded session so that's a four second chart okay <clears throat> so all these little pictures make sense to me but i take two quick screenshots i mark them up mark it up uh, put in these emojis, name it. This is where you get your um, playbook names. You can see I have a fuckload of them. They're all alphabetical order. And then uh, save it, you're done. You can add the picture here. You can do videos, whatever. You can even write a description about it, which I do suggest for those of you who are newer or for those of you who are taking bigger trades that are very intricate, do that. But for me as a scalper, this is... I got to be fast and I got to get a fuckload of these in quickly. And this is the best method, honestly, because, you know, with S and B, they talk about playbooking a lot, but they don't tell you how scalpers do it. And there's got to be a fucking quick way. Otherwise, if I can spend an hour and a half on one playbook trade, that's a big one. And that's great and all, but honestly, as a, somebody who scalps and yes, I'm taking bigger setups and and my scalps can lead into bigger scalps overall. This is the best, quickest, most efficient way. Screenshot, screenshot, really no description. Sometimes there is, and that's it. And then I mark it up real quick. But that's the thing. I know what I'm looking at. I know these patterns. So, like, this is a specific price pattern that happened on the one-minute chart. And there was a lot of noise in it, but I smoothed it out. I bounced off these high nodes. Uh, ME means my entry, MX means my exit, IX means ideal exit, okay? If there's IE, that means ideal entry, which I hit it perfectly. But I cut it too soon, and I could have held it to this low node, marked by LN, which is the low node up here. And there's also a Z pattern up here as well, and then I put an X here because this is the VPOC, and this is called uh, Big Wing. Um so, yeah, give me just a second, guys. I'm going to run just like literally 20 seconds. I'll be right back. Somebody 
knocking on my door. Sorry about that. Was that 20 seconds? Okay. So, yeah, this is the big wing. But um, so this specific pattern, uh, like three or four times over the, within the last two weeks, I would hit this one specific playbook trade perfectly. And it would eventually go to target but the problem is it would go past me by a substantial amount of ticks so it happened like three or four times and i started to realize that there was an underlying pattern and i recognized it every time it was happening so what i learned was instead of leaving 30 fucking ticks on the table uh, i don't hold it to target because it's not ready yet and then this specific pattern always happens. So this is a pattern within a pattern of a, a different playbook setup. Um, and you'll probably notice that a lot of your playbook setups might have to, they might have to do with another playbook setup or it may be confirmed by another playbook setup failing. And that's what this is kind of a, is. And it's called the big wing. And uh, basically, from this center line, it goes a symmetrical distance up and a symmetrical distance down. And, and, and that's what I'm kind of looking for. I'm not going to get into the details of my playbook setups. If I was to sell a course, it would be on this shit more specifically. And it would cost a lot of money. Because I've spent years trying to perfect this. That's just how it is. So you have these emojis. Uh, did I follow my plan? Yes. Did I react well to the market behavior? I think I did. Gut feeling of entry? Yes. Overall feel of the exit. I wasn't too happy with the exit because I left so much. But overall, I think it was a good trade. Here's what it looks like on the four second. This 37 even marked with this P because I mark uh, composite levels on here. Uh, this 37.25 where I got in was right about here. So I nailed it perfectly and i know it looks like i caught a falling knife but it's a specific pattern that made sense and you can see how volatile the market is in this screenshot um my patterns work all the time but when the markets are thin and volatile they just have more movement to them and they create more noise um so yeah that's the big wing so you can save it and then you have it forever um, so the next trade is a VPOC bounce. Obviously, this is one of my better setups. I was happy across, with it across the board. Uh, again, the market is very volatile, so it doesn't look like there's a VPOC here, but there is on a composite chart. And this blew through it, bounced it. And when it's very volatile and thin like this, I know that I need to wait. Um for the move to tighten up on a specific piece of structure I'm looking to get in on. Now, if the market was slower and thicker, it would probably have hit this to the tick or gone through it by two ticks maybe. But when it's like this, it's gonna be bouncing and chopping uh, on key levels a lot more. So what I did was it started stair-stepping by putting in higher lows and higher highs. And then once it got right here, the market stalled quite a bit and volume dried up. And then I knew that was it. And then I nailed it perfectly initially. And then it came down and went against me like three or two ticks. Yeah, three ticks. So initially it was good, but I knew there was a higher target, which I didn't get much more out of it uh, from the first push. But... I was happy with it. Honestly, it did run further, so this is kind of skewed. But it's a quick screenshot, and then I mark it up. That's it. Very quick. This takes me no time to do. I look at the footage. I kind of play it, look at it. Maybe five, six minutes per thing. Uh, some of the ones with the bigger charts a little longer. Not even. I mean, they're very quick. Uh, let's look at another one. Uh, here's a v another VPOC bounce. This is off. This is a uh, okay. Yeah, this one. Um, so I was happy with everything except for my exit. 
and I, I guess I wasn't too happy with the entry. So let's look at the big picture on this specific trade. Uh, ideal exit entry would be up here on this high node, and the ideal exit would have been this low node down here. My entry was here, so I was late, and my exit was here, so I cut it early. So I, I just, it wasn't good on either end of the spectrum. So with your playbook trades, you need to figure out what are the best exits and entries. You have to do that. So again, idea, IE and IX, ideal entry, ideal exit, ME, MX, my entry, my exit. So here's the ideal entry, which I marked it, and this was a high node on a composite, even though it doesn't look like it on this profile. And shortly after it started going down, uh, I got in it. I think I got in it pretty good. Yeah, I got in it pretty good. Uh, and then I ended up fucking cutting it way too early. So I know to hold this a little bit longer on the next go. And here's the thing. I know this, it's like, how do you, how do you get better? How do you know to, without more detailed information, how do I know to hold these longer? I, these are specific patterns I see all day long and they happen every day. Like my patterns, a lot of my patterns happen every fucking day, multiple ones. Cause as a scalper, you kind of have to, it's different if you're swing trading, right? If those patterns don't come around as often. So the thing is, is I do more and more of these playbooks. I'm going to start to get a little bit better at them. I'm going to put a little more detailed notes in it. I'm going to start to break shit down a little bit more. I'm going to start to add more things to them. But this is a way for me to get information in quickly. Um, so I can see what my best performing playbook trades are. And then that way I can start you know, spending more time on those so I can spend more time figuring them out, figuring out how to make them better. This is just, again, a quick way to get them in because I, I have so many fucking trades. But now, after a month, I know that I need to spend more time uh, really looking at these fucking things and spending an hour on each one uh, because it's my best trade and I take the most of them. So I need to spend a lot more fucking time going into this next month on that specific trade. But for this specific month, I'm just cramming shit in there really quickly. Okay? So now that I know that that's good, these, these specific trades are worth more time when it comes to playbooking. Putting in more like detailed descriptions, taking more pictures, really studying shit looking at other previous playbook trades that are similar, seeing how they're similar, seeing what the volatility might be. But first I need to know if that specific trade is even worth the time. And now, after a month, I know it is. So I put them in quickly. And this is for any of you, no matter what phase of your playbooking you're in. So um, let's look at, uh, I guess, one more. This one's all right. Ooh, I left so much profit on the table. Let's look at it anyways. What is this one called? Oh, it's a stair step. See, this one isn't that great of a trade. Like, I don't take that many of these. Let's see, how many stair steps do I have? It's not a good yielding trade, uh, monetarily wise. Do I take a lot of these or no? Yeah, I take took a. Uh, I mean, it's the fifth best trade. Well, not by much. It's actually tied with these. So this could be a trade that's worth keeping track of, but it's not something I'm gonna spend a fuckload of time on and. The playbook trades where like you only have like one or two after the end of the month, they're kind of worth just throwing away, toss them away. So I do need to go through the playbook section and just get rid of shit that's not there. But here's the thing 
over time, you have to realize that uh, your playbook trades may stop working. Um, don't throw them away because they work in a specific type of condition or market environment, whatever. So don't you don't want to throw everything away. You know what I mean? Oh, this doesn't work anymore. I'm going to toss it. No, 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 no. It, it's still there. It, I mean, if it was one of your best, clearly one of your best trade trades for that month or whatever, you definitely need to keep it because when the market environment switches back uh, to slower conditions or fast conditions, whatever it was working in, you need to go back and review those playbook trades. Um, so that way you can get reacquainted with them. But there are some you just want to get rid of that just aren't that great. And you don't, maybe you don't take enough of them. Um, if Again, if you're sitting there holding, that's a different thing. But as a scalper, I want something that works well monetarily and I take all the time. So, I mean, this one, like, uh, see how it's stair-stepping up? And clearly there's a major overnight low is here. My entry was right in here somewhere. And the ideal exit was up here. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. I let the motherfucker run all the way up to here, which there was a VPOC and the VWAP. And I, I guess I let it come back to where I didn't make shit on it. I made $150. How many lots was this for? Fuck. So I only made three ticks on it. I let it run all the way up there and took only three ticks. So that's not good, but I'm learning from it. And I know that the motherfucker bounced off VWAP because I can see it up there. So this, all of the way this looks, it does make sense to me. It does make sense. And then again, these P's on here, that all means something. MP and the L, that all means stuff to me. That may not mean shit to you, but I get it. So it's just a quick screenshot. Boom, 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 boom. Put it in. Um, clearly I was not happy with the exit on the deal. So, okay, now that you've screenshotted charts and reverse engineered shit to make it make sense to you, because it has to make sense. Again, for those of you who are new, you're not going to be able to just do it as quickly as I can, because you're going to really be staring at shit, you know what I'm saying? Really be, like, watching the footage. But that's okay. It, and here's the thing. When you're not doing well, listen, and this is from Mike Bellafieri uh, of SMB Capital. Losers try to make money. Winners try to get better. Okay. Often too many traders, a lot of traders, I work with traders, they're so concerned about performing and they base their performance on P&L and that's just not, doesn't work. I've tried it. It doesn't work. You it's okay if you take a fuckload of shit, shitty trades, but if you're picking out good crap, um, that's what's going to make the difference. Uh, that's why I think overtrading is good on a, a demo because you're sampling the market. You, you get you get the feel of it. You get quicker of it. You, you see, you know what your reaction times are. Uh, and the more you hit, the better you're going to get, honestly. Um it's like playing baseball, man. Instead of just going to the game to hit the baseball, go to the batting cages. And that's exactly what this shit's, shit is, this method of overtrading on a demo account. So sample, 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 practice, 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 get better, get better, get better, um, and uh, start building up a, a fucking playbook. Because in the end, that playbook is what's going to be make you consistently profitable and that's where you're going to be able to scale up size uh, because you want to get good at that shit so uh, don't beat yourself up if you don't do well okay and too many guys do that because of their P&L don't, don't beat yourself up if you don't do well because of the P&L did you learn something did, like every day is a good day for me even if I didn't trade that well because I'm getting something good out of it I mean, if I get, if I have a bad day and I get 20 fucking playbook trades out of it, dude, that's a fantastic day. If I have a good day and I only get three playbook trades out of it, well, you know, that's a good day too. But, you know, the other day I had a lot more playbook trades on, on it. And had I just stuck with that, I would have performed well and I'm learning them. 
And again, these are the trades you're going to scale size up on. And you're going to, you want to get so comfortable and acquainted with them that it's not this fucking heart wrenching uh, battle to where you get real nervous and shit. You just can do it without thinking. Because uh, that does, you, you will get to that point, and then you scale up size, man. It's, I mean, shit, imagine 10 lots on, on some of these fucking deals, right? I mean, fuck. This specific trade, I was up, what, 25 ticks? So let's just say I took 23, yeah, I could have took 23 ticks on it. So 23 ticks times 1250 that's $287. Well, if I was trading 10 lots, this specific trade could have yielded me $2,875 $2, on 10 lots, right? Uh, maybe I get so good at it that I scale it up to 20 lots, right? That, that would be $5,750. So $10,000 days are totally possible, right? It, these are the things you have to do to get there. So, so when you do it, you want to put on your your entry, your exit, even if they suck, uh, ideal entry and ideal exit. You on these playbook trades, you need to know where's the best entry, where's the best exit, and how do I do that? You've got to do that. You've got to do that. Again. You want to be easy on yourself when you're not doing well, but when you do well and you are hitting good trades, you need to be even harder on yourself because you need to get better at that. So create a playbook name, tag the trade. So you've seen how I uh, did it. You know, you just tag it up here, right? Whatever you want. Um, then... Do this for a month, and when you do it for a month, you're going to have these stats, okay? So you'll have all these stats. Figure out what are the best ones, right? So uh, do this for a month. Figure out the best setups after the month. So on Sunday, every Sunday, you want to review the last two weeks of playbook setups because you want them to be fresh in your mind. So when you go into the next session, you know, you internalize what they are so you can be fresh and you can hone in and get them. If you want to do that every fucking day, that even better. Okay, on the next month, so this is the first month. This is uh, assuming you guys aren't doing any of this shit. Create a second account okay this is very important um let me find this thing real quick uh, let me just pull up this jigsaw deal where is that little deal ah there it is hold on real quick guys okay so you want to create a second demo account, call it the playbook or whatever you want to call it. Um, so again, you want to figure out the top performing playbook trades and the ones that you do the most of from the previous month. So basically what I set up there. All right. And then trade only those playbook setups on the playbook account when they show up. So on Jigsaw, this is how you quickly swap between accounts. Fuck, I did that again. Uh, geez, that fucking shit. Give me that little thing. There it is. Okay. So. You want to swap through these things. So what you want to do is keep the strategy tester up. Okay. So the second month, you want to, you, when the playbook setup comes, you want to switch over. Okay. And there's a re this is very important to understand. So listen carefully. Switch over to that playbook account. Trade your playbook setups. Okay. Only the playbook setups. Do not add any more to it until the month is over. All right. 
because you're going to spend a month really working on those. And at the end of the next month or whatever, um, if there's even more playbook tr setups that you aren't taking that are newer, uh, you're going to you're going to add them. So what's going to happen again? So I know that my what my top performance. So, so I'm getting real confused and tongue tied here. OK, here we go. So for the month of November, I'm only going to do VPOC transition because it's the end of October. I'm going to only focus on these three setups to where I only trade them. And what I mean by I only focus, I only trade them in the playbook only account. That's it. Nothing else goes in there. Not even the big wing trade if I keep cranking them shits out. Okay, that's it. Because I want to see what my performance would be on a separate account if I'm only taking playbook trades. And clearly, if I'm only taking playbook trades, this month would have yielded me $14,000, right? But I know I can trade these trades bigger and better. I know I can hit them better and get out later. So I want to just squeeze the max I can out of them. All right. So only do that. So what are the best ones after the first month? So this is like a two month fucking process. And you guys have to do it like this. Okay. So this is steps to playbooking first month. Okay. Let's just do that second month let's do yeah let's do that i'm gonna put this in the description okay so you guys can have it uh, all right so there you go create a second demo account called the playbook which i showed you what that is figure out the top performing trades and the ones you did the best because that's the only ones you're gonna do in there and i fucking guarantee that you're going to probably be consistently profitable in that specific account. That's why you're doing that. Now, some of you guys would probably just stick to that, and that's that. Here's where I'm going to throw a curveball at you. Don't, don't just trade your playbook setups. What you need to do is, because you're going to be sitting around, and nothing's going to be happening for hours at times. So switch to the strategy tester and start cranking away again. OK, and when you see your playbook set up, switch over, take the playbook set up. Once that's done, switch back to the strategies tester, start sampling and cranking away. Why are you doing that? It's because you are testing and sampling other potential setups that will eventually become playbook setups. You don't want to be a one-trick pony where you're only taking one playbook trade and you're scaling that up. That's great and shit. You can do that. But honestly, if you want to be a seven-figure trader, I, th I thoroughly think you... I don't know because I'm not there yet. But when I get there, I'll let you know. Ooh, confidence. Um, or arrogance. But anyways, keep sampling. Keep doing that. But also... You're not just looking for other playbook setups. When you switch over, you're practicing the skill of being quick. So here's a few things I do. On Monday afternoons, my job is to try to take non-setup trades. What I want to do is I want to try to be very quick at break even and one tick wins. One, two tick wins. And I'm trying to hit spots by just reading tape. And all I'm doing is scalping, doing these little one tick drills on Monday for the rest of the afternoon. And the reason I do that is because that is practice and that allows me to be quick. OK, as a scalper, you have to be fast. And there are times where I fucking freeze up way too many times. So that Monday afternoons, that is my one tick drill days. And that's not going to go away. I'm going to keep fucking doing that. OK, now, if I see a potential playbook setup come, I will switch over. Most likely, uh, then I'll go back to doing the drill. Um, eventually, that drill I may never have to do again. But as of now, that's a good fucking practice for anybody. But I also know that. On average, no matter what kind of trades I'm taking, seven trades is my average because i measured how many trades i take before i start to 
my deg I perform like shit. Like, there's a point where I hit performance degradation, and I measured my statistics, and I know that on average it's seven trades. Sometimes it's more, uh, sometimes it's a little bit less, but on average, average it's seven trades. So there'll be a different afternoon on a different day where I try to hit just scalps, not one tick drills, but I try to hit scalps that I think are decent hits based off time and sales or structure or something. But I try to scalp and I want my first seven trades to be profitable. I mean, of course, there can be a loser in there, here or there, but after seven trades, the the net PL of those first seven trades have to be pretty good. Uh, and then I try to do it again. So I step out, go meditate for 10 minutes. Uh, I practice my trading mantra, which I haven't talked about. That might be another video. And then I come back and I hit another seven trades and try to be consistent again. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to hit 14 trade streaks to where I'm constantly profitable 14 ticks. Or I'm 14 ticks, 14 trades. So what it is is essentially like lifting weights. I can only lift the seven trade weight, right? Well, I want to get better at being consistent. I want to push that threshold out. I want my performance to degrade later in time. Like I want to put that out there. Like my performance degradation could come from fatigue or something else. Uh, I also measure the time. It's 30 minutes. So seven trades or 30 minutes, I leave no matter what. But there are certain afternoons where I practice seven trades, and then I try to hit another seven, then another seven, then another seven. But at the same time, I'm hitting, you know, playbook shit and non-playbook shit. I'm just cranking away, but I'm trying to be consistent. And if I hit good shit within that uh, practice realm, I will add it to the playbook. Like, I'll quick shot it and playbook, playbook it. So, my practices can lead to me um, getting some sort of playbook set up that I just figured out. Or maybe I happen to see a pattern I like and I just try and trade it. Well, I'll try to trade it well and I'll put it in there. Um, so, just keep cranking away because it's good for, pra especially for those of you that want to scalp or scalp to enter big trades. That's, for, I know it goes against the grain compared to what everybody else says, but in my opinion, that's the best way to do it. And then you switch, switch accounts. So, switch to other demo when your setups aren't there. Use the time to practice being quick and trying to find more playbook setups. Again, don't just sit there and, and not do shit for 30 minutes an hour. Yeah, you can be consistently profitable like that, but don't you want to be the best trader you can possibly be? Don't you want to be a fucking monster? Because I do. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you want to be a million dollar a year trader. And that's, you, you got to go, you got to push yourself out of that comfort zone. And eventually when you're, when you're trading big trades um, and you're really good, really good uh, and, and you're doing very well for yourself you don't have to switch the demo just trade less size and you can start to not necessarily practice being quick or do these exercises but i think initially doing one tick drills on monday afternoons is a good thing to do uh, initially trying it figure out where how many trades you start to suck at you know keep trying to push that out further and further and further Keep practicing that because this is a process and eventually you won't need to do these sort of practices, but it's going to help you in the long run to become a better trader. And eventually when you're real good, you won't need to do that kind of shit, but you can still be sampling potential playbook trades, but just trade lesser size, like one lots or some shit, <clears throat> and then start doing the same process. But in the meantime... You're killing it on your playbook setups. And again, I think if you're sitting around not doing shit for 30 minutes, an hour or two hours, you're wasting your fucking time, especially if you're newer at this, you're not consistently profitable yet, and you're not making $10,000 days. I think you're wasting your fucking time 
So over fucking trade. Okay. Um, and I think that is it for the this specific video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Uh, again, I probably won't be on for a while, but I will be back at some time, some point in the future. Later, guys.